got that flood mud from the North Carolina Asheville French Broad River, River Hurricane Helene disaster. Uh, we're gonna analyze that mud. I don't know if I'm like, you know, stepping on any like government agency's toes or anything like that. I'm just, you know, a citizen scientist from the Marshall area here. So they're from, kind of read this email, they're from an uh, area in Marshall uh, where the flooding took place after a hurricane clean. They collected samples on 10 6, so that's about like 12 days ago now. So they have been sitting. Uh, kind of like fermenting Ziploc bags. Uh, the samples were from uh, the mud from the French Broad River near Capital Capitola Mill, mud from the southeast corner of Bailey's Branch Road. If you're local to this area, chime in because I, I don't know these areas. We can do a little map. Maybe we'll do a little map video to try to find where these are. We got uh, mud from the Blana Hassett Island, Island and French Broad River, and Marshall Water from the French Broad River, uh, mud from this riverbank, and mud from this riverbank. So we got six total samples, and then the best part is, is there are photographs. Oops. There are photographs right here. Take a look. So, we have the first photograph, sample collection, look at that, gear. This guy's out there fighting the good fight for everybody. All right, this is what the sample looks like. Hopefully there's a bunch of dirt inside the Ziploc bag, because I can't just use like a uh, Q-tip's worth, but they're telling me there's a lot of dirt. Look at this, poor people. You know, I have family from uh, North Carolina in the affected area, so I'm personally uh, really invested in this. We, we uh, have a kind of a cabin property uh, of three miles, four miles over the border from Tennessee on that 321 road, Tennessee towards North Carolina. So it's in, it's uh, three miles in on the North Carolina side from the Tennessee border. And that road, I think, is all kind of wiped out. There's a big river that runs through that whole area. Uh, my family evacuated the Boone and then had to be saved from Boone. So it's, uh, um, it's definitely a tragic thing for the region. It's a very remote area if you've ever been out there. Very, very rugged. The Pisgah National Forest is probably one of the most rugged, hard to build through, mountainous, jagged rock forests ever. When the roads go out, it takes forever to get them rebuilt. So here we are, we're gathering mud. This is clearly mud flood mud that brought, was brought in from the area from who knows where uh, as the whole region flooded. Um, really appreciate you guys doing this and contacting me. Look at this, this is Edge of the French Broad. I'm, I think he's claiming as the island, potentially. But look at this. This is this is the mud. I, I don't know. We're going to do some uh, research to figure out what's the best way to analyze mud samples. I've never been that good at environmental soil samples. Uh, it's just because they're so complex. There's so many things there. But since we're not really looking at the soil itself, we're trying to look for contaminations in the soil. Um, we'll try to focus our Google Scholar search towards that. Try to find a method. But you can see here it is. This is uh, this is the sample collection. Look at this guy. Hope he's okay with me sharing these photos. But this is where it's coming from. This is the legit North Carolina mud flood samples. And then there is a note, which I'm assuming is going to be in the package. So here we go. Let's go ahead and live open the package from North Carolina. That's what that's what we're worried about. So we should glove up, glove up. All right, we've opened this. Here we go, Ziploc bag. It has been leaking. It's a little worse for wear. Whew, not that stinky. Okay, the note, luckily they took a photo of it. The note is all wet. I love saving the notes from you guys when you send me packages. This is going to be a hard one to salvage. It's covered in French Broad River flood water. Oh man, I'm going to have to just lay it out and try to dry it without unfolding it. Maybe we'll be able to salvage that guy. Okay, so we have sample uh, one. There's plenty in there. 
Any polymer that I detect is probably from the bag. Ziploc bags and Q-tips are going to have polymer in them, so we're not looking for polymer. Don't worry about microplastics, guys. You have bigger problems to deal with. We're going to look for environmental contamination from chemical plants or something. I don't know. Sample number two. Pretty good condition, guys. Good job. I like the container. Sample three. Put a piece of paper down on my desk so I'm not contaminating my desk if anyone was concerned about me. Four was what appears to be a, a bag of water. Four, water. Well, so next time, what, we, what have we learned? Don't send Ziploc bags of water. They will leak out and get onto your note. Um, so maybe we will not be analyzing the water bag. Um, I could try putting water in to the water bag that's empty and extracting it. Next time use just a tiny little glass jar or plastic jar that seals. That will be better for water. Um, but anyways, mud's plenty. We'll just do the mud. Five, plus you know the, the, all the mud's probably now soaked in that water. Um, okay. And sample six. So we'll do a quick analysis today to try to get some data uh, on all the mud combined, like an average mud analysis and then we'll dig into some locations maybe do a second video uh, with like geo located points on a on a Google Earth map here and uh, where these are and then assess them all individually and see where different molecules are kind of tracking if we get so here I am gonna combine all of the tubes to make an average I was the first tube uh, this is the fifth sample uh, this is the third sample we're not using the fourth sample uh, they're all of different consistencies and textures, but we're just combining them all together into one tube to do a combined extraction. That was the second sample and the last sample right there. So now we'll go ahead and extract them. The first thing I'm going to do is just extract it with some DI water. And uh, we're going to take just a water extract first. So just kind of like solubilizing the mud uh, in the water. And then we'll go ahead and do a liquid-liquid extraction uh, with DCM. I have all the mud. Looks like it's going right in. It's water, so that should work perfectly. Then we're going to take some of this slurry and pipette it out. This is the first sample. This is just the water extract only. Now, okay, so now I'm going to add some methanol to this. Uh, to help me extract it further. So now we added up about a little bit more than 50% methanol. We're going to extract that again, and then we're going to take this sample and make a second tube with a mill of the methanol water solution. See, we have two samples. We have the methanol water on the right, and then the plain water on the left. The plain water one, we are going to liquid liquid extract with DCM. Uh, the methanol water one, we're just going to dilute out with water and run on LCM. All right, spin them out. It's probably enough time. So here's what they look like, spun out, got all the sediment out there, looks like we got a nice water and methanol extract. Right, so I just diluted in water the methanol extract one, and so our LCMS sample is complete on the right there. So the LCMS sample is ready. The GCMS sample needs to be extracted. With DCM. All right, so spinning out the DCM extracts, we combined the two DCM extracts. There is a combined DCM extraction with a little water on top, so we don't get it so it stays dry. It's kind of a nice way to do it. So what we did here is we extracted. So what we did here is we extracted uh, the mud itself with DCM, and we liquid liquid extracted the DCM uh, water extract. And we combine them with a little water on top. So now I'm going to do a 10x and a 5x dilution uh, in DC. I'm going to put this on to the GC. There goes. So we got the 5x and the 10x. This is a North Carolina flood mud, DCM extracted, liquid liquid, and straight dirt DCM combined fractions onto thermo GC trace. I'll put it in. I'm going to go. 10x, then 5x actually. We're going to put them in the opposite order. 10x and 5x. 
look at the chart. Position 79 and 80. All right, I got the uh, GCMS data here. This is that North Carolina mud extracted. There's a lot of very minor peaks. Again, the sample is probably quite dilute uh, just because there's so many things in mud. Uh, I checked all these masses. These are kind of just boring hydrocarbons that would be from environmental samples in soil. This is uh, triglyceride fat, very common. Not too worried about that. The only really interesting thing I'm finding with some confidence is this blip of a tiny peak right here. You can see the data is pretty clean here on top. That seems to be meshing a small chemical molecule called uh, cyclohexone. So this is the cyclohex with the ketone, so it's cyclohexone. Um, if you look this up, this is a cyclic ketone, like I was saying, called cyclohexone. Uh, it is definitely an industrial commodity. It's of different industries from ag to food to nutrition to plastics to rubber. I don't know how toxic it is. It has a sweet odor similar to benzaldehyde or acetone and is water soluble, which is making all a lot of sense. Uh, it is used in metal degreasing and nylon production. Careful, if you get too close to this stuff, it does seem to be hazardous. This is probably at really high concentration. It does look like the cyclohexanone is major use is in nylon manufacturing. So maybe we should research uh, nylon manufacturing uh, in the area around North Carolina. Go right north of Asheville, along the river, we have Mill Manufacturing Corporation. Mill Manufacturing Corporation uh, is making military parachutes and commercial sewing. Uh, let's see. Government military services parachute manufacturing. Uh, parachutes uh, probably have nylon. All right, well, I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe uh, they got materials, let's see, Kevlar, nylon, but I'm not thinking that they're manufacturing the textiles there, they may be purchased from elsewhere. We manufacture textile products for them, oh, maybe they are actually manufacturing the textiles there. I think we're going to do a really good job. They should be pulling samples from this mill and seeing if chemicals from Mill Manufacturing Corporation have contaminated the French Broad River right here and got into the mud that's now all over the River Arts District. Mud mud data off the LCMS Zevo Utah. We're doing the hexyl fennel column. I ran a blank before and after. I want to be really certain it's coming from the mud. Alright, so here we go. We got the mud data on the bottom. Both are blanks on top. We need peaks that are in nobody else but the mud. We just want them mud peaks. So, looking at them here, we're going to go this 284 blip. That's one. 284 mass. See how it's skipping isotopes? 284, 286. That's definitely halogenated. That's a 284 that has a strange isotope pattern. It's matching something with three chlorides. That's halogen, so that could be the right pattern. So we're going to copy that pattern and put it on an isotope model here to that match. There's the isotope pattern from the hit. There's the molecule we're finding at 284, so I'm pretty confident. We got ourselves tris chloral ethyl phosphate. What is this stuff? Oh, this is a flame retardant used in plastics. It is specially used in flexible foams, used in automobile and furniture. Oh, that definitely makes sense. So, beware, you have what's called TSEP. This is a, again, a polymer resin polyurethane uh, ingredient. It is a plasticizer and flame retardant. Uh, you got that in your flood mud water there, a little TSEP. Just, just be cautious. It is a hazardous molecule. If I found it in the mud, uh, even though it's been diluted out that much with all that mud, uh, there could be a good amount of this stuff. Uh, someone should be checking for this officially. If we can drag across this TSEP peak, uh, 
uh, you can see that it is a really good peak just in. We look at it compared to the blanks. We extract across the blank region where that peak would be, and we're seeing no signal. So this is definitely only in uh, the mud sample. And stay tuned for part two. Uh, where we run all five individually located mud samples and see if we can figure out, we'll do targeted just for the T-step. See where that guy's coming from or if it's everywhere.